Hi everyone, Laura at Broken Wind, carrying on my Q&A session with the questions that were on the Clarinet Repair video series. So we will crack on with more now. Gary Rose, great question. Do you have to disinfect the instrument before working on it, especially in the current climate? Yes, I never used to, um, particularly, in all honesty, um, because it didn't really worry me. Um, in the current climate, yes. Um, so what I'm currently doing is actually quarantining instruments when they come in, if they've been played recently. So I had a load of instruments that have come in because people in lockdown had time to sort through their garage or their loft or whatever and they found, like I had someone who found a, a flute and they brought it in and when I asked when it was last played they said 1980. So <laughs> I think that was safe to do because um, obviously they'll contain droplets from the player um, which is a potential risk for myself and obviously with me testing them as potential risk going back to the customer the other way. So I use something called Sterisol, um, which is S-T-E-R-I-S-O-L, and it's a, it's pink in a spray, and it's basically sort of a cleaning spray, which is not harmful to the instrument anyway. It doesn't harm the wood or ebonite or metals. Um, so it's safe for the instrument and obviously helps with the safety for yourself. So yes, at the moment I am quarantining the instrument if it's been played and then I'm cleaning it, and then I'm repairing it, and then testing the instrument, I then clean it again with the Sterosol before giving it back to the customer. Um, and I do at the moment have a form that I'm getting customers to sign to just say that they've not been off island, which is a current issue here with travel and um, the COVID numbers, and also make sure that they've just got all their details in there for potential contact tracing should there be any issues. So yeah, that's the cleaning, and then wow, we've got a few questions. It's lovely. Thank you for all these. Um, it's kept me busy and got my brain working on some different things. Um, how long did the whole repair take me? Well, uh, I would say a full clarinet repad. I would average a. I'd allow myself a day's work, but it wouldn't necessarily take the full day. So, I would say this one because it was quite well behaved. I would say it probably took me about six hours start to finish. Um, but I would, yeah, I would normally allocate a day to do that and hopefully would have time left in my day if it's well behaved. You always get the occasional one that's maybe a bit older and it's just a bit of a pain in the bum. Um, let me see. Daniel Walter, I think I've half answered your question of how do you remember where all the bits go? Well, the screws I put back in the instrument so you know where those go. And as far as the keys, it's just repetition. I mean, I'm a clarinetist, so I know what the keys look like anyway, as to which one goes where. Um, for having I started playing clarinet age eight, so um, I've got a lot of knowledge there anyway, let alone the fact I've been repairing them for that long. So I know where the keys go. Um, I must admit, other instruments um, has taken a bit more time. Um, I remember when I was an apprentice, I first stripped down my first saxophone and I played saxophone since I was about 15 as well. So I knew my way around it, but obviously not necessarily how it came apart and went together. And I stripped it all down and then I went off for my lunch break, came back, put it back together and one of the cheeky chaps in my workshop has stolen the first key that you have to put on. So I put it all back together and realised there was a hole. <laughs> and they waved the key at me. This one goes first. So <laughs> that was a learning curve. Little cheeky chaps, I had the best time with them. Absolutely the best time. Um, who, I don't know who actually asked this question. Sorry, I didn't write your name down, but why not use a feeler gauge instead of the paper for testing the padding? Um, you said whether it was something to do with oil. Yeah, possibly oil contamination, in all honesty. Um, I was just always taught to use the paper. The paper's non abrasive, I think, is probably the biggest reason why not to use a feeler gauge. Um, the feeler gauge being metal would have a, an edge to it, no matter how fine that is, it would still have an edge, which could potentially, the skin on these pads is so thin, the last thing you want is to be testing it and just ripping little bits or nicking little bits on the edge on the way around. You want it to be as thin a, possible, as thin a material as possible to make sure your padding is correct. But you, yeah, really don't want anything to affect the pad itself. Um, be it from it having an edge or from, as you say, 
contaminating maybe some oil or something that's off the metal um, you can guarantee with the cleaning paper that it's clean because it's a new one used each time um, actually and I must admit from doing it sometimes if you've cleaned say a wooden instrument and you might have put a bit of oil in it um, or on it um, you then use the feeler gauge it can obviously get a bit oily once you've done that so you have to throw that one away so you don't contaminate the other pads um, so I think it's a cleanliness issue as well um, and you also asked oh no someone else asked who was that oh you want to see oh it's the same person sorry I wanted to have a video on signs of damage I will do that not a problem um, as and when things come up I will highlight them and show how I can sort of diagnose issues sometimes um, Particularly with younger players, should we say, you might get the parent drop in and say, oh, little Johnny's saxophone's not working or something, and they just say, oh, it's just suddenly not working. You can t generally tell maybe why it's not working. Um, I had a classic years ago where a flute came in and it was shaped like a banana, best way of describing it, and I thought, hmm this isn't right and I said to the parent this has been hit on something like this isn't an accidental damage you can tell something's been hit on it I said, but it's not a hard edge so it's been hit on something rounded because it's kind of bent anyway the parent went away and discussed it with their their little Johnny and they came back and admitted they'd hit their little sister over the head with it <laughs> admittedly the flute was quite a cheap one so it was kind of made of cheese and um, so it just sort of bent but um, I tried to think how that went for the little sister, so, whoops. Um, yeah, you can tend to tell. So I'll, I'll, when I get something that's damaged rather than maintenance, I will definitely highlight it to you. And there we go. Uh, someone said, no Barry mouthpiece. I do have a Barry mouthpiece. It wasn't on my bench because it's big and gets in the way. So I have a Barry mouthpiece that is stashed in my little safe that I have in the workshop, um, just to be out of the way and clean. And, but I do have a Barry mouthpiece and I do, um, it's actually my one as well, it's not like a cheaper workshop one I use, it's actually my one uh, that I use for whenever I dip in on Barry sacks, so I tend to look after it a bit better than if it was just one of my general workshop ones. Uh, last few questions I have, um, Stuart Barker, hello, um, if a brass instrument gets dented do I have the tools and the skills to push it back into shape? Yes, simple answer. Um, I will do some brass repairing ones uh, at some point in the future. Uh, if it's a dent, I have some dent removal um, tools, uh, which are basically rods and balls that you can push the dent out from inside out. Um, and can I repair a cracked thimble? No. I've tried, in all honesty. got a few friends that are drummers and I've had a go and it didn't go well for me or the cymbal, to be honest. So I've found for time and effort involved it's not really worth it for me I don't quite have the skills slash tools there to make it worthwhile for either party so sorry um uh, final couple of questions are from Tim Beaton I think it is if I can read my own handwriting um how different are woodwind and brass to work on quite different actually um I think you said there and presumably there's some things that overlap but there are a bit say um uh, I think the only thing that really overlaps is soldering, like if I have to solder on a flute or a saxophone maybe. Um, there's a lot of soldering to do with the brass. Brass, in honesty, is glorified plumbing. Dare I say it. It's a tube with valves that go up and down, um, bits come unsoldered, bits get dented, uh, things get twisted, that kind of thing uh, with brass. Uh, woodwind, you've obviously got a lot of the, the key work and the padding and the springing in the corks that need to all balance. Um, I'm not saying brass don't need to balance, of course they do, but um, I would say brass, can t other than trombone, are all kind of bigger versions of each other. So you have the cornet, the trumpet, the euphonium, obviously, uh, sorry, tenor horn, baritone horn, euphonium, tuba, um, everything from small to large, um, generally are on a par with each other, just different sizes. And then you've obviously got trombone, French horn, to that little bit different um i think Stuart asked as well at some point about doing a french horn when i get one in i will do it i had a little flurry flurry i don't know what you, the collective noun of french horns would be something french maybe um they i had a little flurry yeah of 
broken French horns a few months ago. Um, I think I had three in my workshop, which was unheard of, a little trio of them. Um, so I don't know as and when I'll get another one in. There's obviously not that many players of them anyway, um, especially over here. So I uh, watch this space, maybe luck of the draw, I guess, when we get one in. Um, back to Tim, he also asked if Cork, is there no better man-made alternative? <sighs> there are man-made Cork alternatives. Um, I don't really like them. I've used them in the past and I'm not a massive fan in all honesty. I prefer the natural stuff. It looks nicer, it's fine, it easier to use and it's. I personally think it's a bit less spongy for like give on the instrument. Um, the man-made stuff does have its uses on certain parts because it's less likely to tear. It's a little bit more um, uh, substantial in that way. Obviously the natural has that natural element of, sort of unpredictability a bit um, in it, um, but I just prefer the natural stuff, in all honesty. Um, so there we go. I think that is the questions for the moment. So thanks for listening, everyone, and hopefully that's ticked a few boxes for you all with uh, the queries you had. If you have any more, please put them in the comments. I will keep answering them as I go. I know I'm not the best at replying to the comments on the videos, in all honesty, there's just not enough hours in my day. So please, please don't let that put you off. Put them in there and I will hopefully comment on the videos as I go. Um, and hopefully see you soon. Please like, comment, subscribe and be safe.